Hi, everyone, and welcome to Alive in the Archive. I'm Eliza Samuelson here with the Feminist Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving feminist contributions to culture in our online public archive. Today, I get the pleasure of speaking with multi platinum, Grammy nominated singer songwriter KT Tunstall. KT, welcome to Alive in the Archive. Thank you so much. You have kind of spoken about this like epiphany that you had and kind of the events that led up to it um, that kind of caused you to like uproot your life and move to LA. Um, And I'm curious if you can share a little bit about how like the societal pressures of being a female artist in your industry kind of led to this moment where you realized you were adhering to different conventions and what caused you to break free of that. I I think actually it was, it was, it was the societal pressures of being female. Yeah. Um, even more so than being a female artist. I, I realized I'd had this mental checklist of stuff that I thought I should do. You know, I should get married. I should start trying for a family. I should, I should be extremely happy now that I'm rich, you know, and have a big house. And I, I remember looking at my Wikipedia page and just being totally dismayed. I was just like, Jesus, that's so boring. <laughs> like girl does well, get married, the end. Oh, and I, I was just, and I was, I just felt like a total rock and roll cliche because I had been the boss. I was in charge. I was making all my decisions and I'd got it wrong. Mm. Even though I thought I was doing everything I wanted at the time, I ended up really miserable. Yeah. And my dad passed, which was, you know, he was an old guy and it was all good. We were in a good place. And, um, but his passing was a real gift because it, it, it woke me up. It, it really kicked me in the ass in terms of where I was myself living in London, two big houses, married to the wrong person, feeling a complete lack of conviction and purpose. Like I've, I've achieved my dream. What do I do now? You know? And, um, so I split from my marriage and really realized that I'd got married because I felt like I should, uh, and that I would, you know, thank God I didn't have kids because I, I was trying, but I didn't get pregnant and I didn't want a family. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and I'm still very happy with that decision. I'm just, yeah. you know, grateful. I didn't get myself into a really unfortunate position where I was tied down with someone I didn't love and didn't want to be with. Mm-hmm. And so really to kind of escape all of that negativity around what happened, I just sold everything I owned and moved to Venice Beach, California. It's amazing. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was yeah. one of the best things I've ever done. Yeah. Alongside laser eye surgery, one of the best <laughs> things I've ever done. Um, but yeah, I really recommend it to anyone going through that kind of, uh, you know, dynamite explosion of your life where you realize you're not happy and you admit for the first time you're not happy. I, I could I could really viscerally feel that it was either a moment where I paper over the cracks or I just rip this up and start again. And I'm so glad I did because I was able to build a new life as an older woman, knowing what I wanted with the confidence of knowing who I was much more. Um, and, you know, it's definitely it, it, you bump up against these pressures of being a woman without kids. Um, and I love what I do and I have absolutely no judgment on anyone who is a, who is a touring musician with kids. It's incredible. I don't know how the fuck you do that, but well done, but I, it never appealed to me. And I knew that if I had been a mother, I would probably give this up and I would just want to be a mum. And, and I really didn't want to give this up. So for me personally, and I want to stress that because there's no judgment on anybody else's decisions. Um, my future felt like the the most purpose for me was to to, was to just be an artist yeah and be a great friend to all my nieces and nephews who are going to be coming to stay with me when they hate their parents when they're 14. totally so and I, i i'm very happy i've made that decision and as far as being a female artist on the touring side i actually felt it was a real it was a real advantage i felt that it's a very masculine environment um, often all guys, but I, very early on, I started not even really no on purpose, but employing women, yeah. and then and that always balanced it out. And then I and then I had an all female band, 
mm. back in 2018 and it was amazing it was my favorite tour ever it was so powerful and we were just all so happy to be in a, a rocking girl band it was just and people hadn't seen it you mm. know they'd not seen a rock and roll band that was all girls many people hadn't seen that but there was guys on the crew you know and um but it really got me thinking like the touring side of it i felt the guys were actually treated me better because i was female and would be more polite and would be less crass and would be less kind of careless perhaps mm -hmm. and then on the business side of it i got a bit of a taste of uh you know i'm looking for a record deal and a record executive says to me oh we've already got a girl who plays an instrument sorry you know yeah. and stuff like that and and then also just being made to feel that you're dramatic that is something and difficult like oh she's so difficult it's like no I'm an artist right. and artists are difficult. And yeah. if your artist isn't being difficult, then you have a manufactured artist yeah. you're doing that is just wrong. doing what you're telling them to do. Mm -hmm. So that's taken a bit of time just to kind of accept that some people, guys on the business side of stuff are gonna view you through that lens and you just have to, you just have to barrel through right. and just not take it personally, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm very happy. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm female yeah. in this, in this world right now, because I feel like I've got a great role to play in terms of certainly in the UK, the U S has got an amazing roster of, of, of women art, female artists of all ages, mm -hmm. the UK, not so much. There's I'm kind of on my own in my own decade. Okay. Most, most female artists are kind of 10 years younger than me. So, mm -hmm. um, it's nice to occupy that space and just sort of be the, if you see it, you can be it. Right. Uh, woman in, in a position in my mid to late forties, uh, you know, still making new music and still pushing boundaries. Right. And it's, you know, it's interesting just in your career and hearing you speak about it, like how you have kind of had these intersection points of like, whether that's been in your personal life of like your marriage or your career or, yeah life but like also within your career you've had these kind of intersections of like obviously doubling down on the musician side of stuff but having that bleed over into like the film industry and um you know you've done advocacy work and I think that piece is really interesting too because you know here at TFI we do believe that feminism is activism in and of itself um and I'm curious because you've recently started doing more advocacy work through the creative coalition mm -hmm. um and was hoping you could share a little bit more about it specifically and kind of on this topic of how advocating for you know art and the access to art benefits women from all different backgrounds different ages etc yeah I mean the 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 equality issue uh, particularly in business. I mean, there's there's hard data and stats mm. that show that employing more women in your business makes you more money. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. bottom line. It's like there's a talent and a nurture and a compassion and a personality that can be brought to any company in any business situation by women that is not present if it's all guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always loved that mix and I will always advocate for that mix because I think that men and women together are just, it, it, it's, it's beautiful when mm -hmm. you have a mixed group of human beings coming together and using all your different parts to make something, you know, that's greater than mm -hmm. the sum of its parts. And the Creative Coalition, they have a hashtag, right to bear arts. And it's, it's a great organization run uh, by um, Robin Bronk, it was set up by Christopher Reeves and Susan Sarandon. And it was basically to ensure one of their main goals is that the National Endowment for the Arts is kept within the US uh, government budget. Mm -hmm. And they use kind of, you know, film stars and pop stars and rock stars to go and really say, all of us started from little theater groups or a little local community group or a youth club or, you know, an just a, a two thousand dollar grant to a tiny town in washington state changes that community beyond recognition mm -hmm. and is it, it's about a national well-being and i think that feminism is a, an absolutely integral part of the advocacy for societal well-being 
it's mm -hmm. like you can't have 50 percent of the population oppressed and unhappy and expect to have a good society where kids are growing up with great parenting and uh, becoming really helpful purposeful people in our communities so i i, I it's a huge huge web of of opportunity i think where feminism can help in all of these corners right. to um to really positively lift up women not just to talk and yell mm -hmm. about it but to show mm -hmm. how beneficial it is to everybody in mm -hmm. the community if women are given positions of power positions of organizational power positions of political power and uh positions of community nurture right um and, and given a voice yeah completely um and then lastly um given that the feminist institute is a digital archiving organization we've asked for you to bring something to alive in the archive today that kind of encapsulates your legacy so I'm yeah. curious you, you chose. Now, do I have to show it to you on camera? No, right you, no it's a, if okay. you want to, sure. Um, so what I'm going to put into the archive is my loop pedal. Mm. And the reason I wanted to choose my loop pedal is it changed my life. It, mm. You know, I became kind of known as a, an iconoclastic looper. Mm. <laughs> um, but one of the things that was really cool about that, and it was on the Jules Holland performance where everybody saw me do it for the first time, and many people saw looping for the first time. Of course, Ed Sheeran has now taken mm -hmm. it to great heights. Um, but it was so techy and nerdy, and it was so associated with boys. Mm. I mean, it wasn't just, oh my God, look what she's doing. It was, oh my God, look what she's doing, and she's a girl, <laughs> you know? It was, women had just not been given, and there's some really amazing tech pioneers in the music space and in the science space of, of women who've been building unbelievable things and using equipment to its greatest potential. Mm. But um, it was just a great opportunity to do something that people wouldn't normally associate with a girl mm. doing and then killing it on TV. Yeah. Um, and you know i'm i i i suppose i am a bit of a techie person but i'm not that interested in it mm -hmm. i'm interested in singing songs and i'm interested in whatever can give me the support to do right. what i do and nothing has given me the sport like my loop pedal has 